Poštovano občinstvo, prisrčno dobrodošli v hiši sanjajučih knjih. Welcome, Katežina Tučkova. Thank you very much. Welcome to you. Hello. Thank you once again. Katežina, you are an impressive architect of storytelling. Inventing, shadowing, expanding. Does the process sometimes scare you? Are you ever afraid that the novel you are writing might fall apart? Well, uh, in every moment when I write, uh, so I don't write uh, for all the time when I work or the book, my books are coming very slowly after the research, which took me usually for a year or year and a half in both cases. Uh, in case of uh, Zhitkovské bohyni, Goddesses of Zhitkova, and also in case of my previous book, which uh, uh, is dealing with the topic uh, expulsion of Czechoslovakian Germans at that time, at 1945. So both these cases uh, needs from me the uh, time of res for, for research, very long time. And then I start to write and write for another year and a half. So both this book took me for three years to write. And uh, in the beginning and in the process of research, I'm not scared of anything. I'm just absolutely amazed and, and eager and um, lasting for uncovering of the topic. Then I know my characters and I found their characters of my heroines. And uh, in the final process, I'm quite stressed because the point couldn't... Uh, couldn't pass together, or then I'm very, very stressed. For example, in the book of uh, Zhitkovské, uh, in case of the book Zhitkovské Boginie, I had everything, the research, one year of writing after me, and still something wasn't fine, it, it didn't end, because the whole process uh, developed, I, I didn't hold the skeleton of the story uh, in the beginning. So, in class steps, I was nervous that it, uh, wo it wouldn't work. And then I found out that it's possible, it's necessary to change one character. And I changed one character from women, from ge I changed the gender. So uh, a man character started to be win women character and everything passed together. And it happened in the last month of writing after three years of uh, dealing with the topic. So sometimes it's uh, very challenging and stressful, but I like the work. Mm. It's great. Uh, I should add something. Mm -hmm. just, a, just a second, please. Bila sem se videla posem brez manir v imenu ekonomije besede. Predpostavljala sem nam reči, da viste, kdo je z nami, torej Katežina Tučkova, renomirana češka pisateljica, da si prav mlado peru sodobne češke književnosti, pa vendar s širokim bravskim publikumom. The goddesses of Žitkova obviously didn't fall apart. The investigative process, searching through the archives of state secret police, must have been compellingly magical, yet at the same time disturbing, wasn't it? So, it was um, because I was very curious and inquisitive what can I cover about the goddesses. It wasn't everything together like it is in this book. So it was uh, quite challenging. I, I didn't feel anything more than the real real um, longing for to uncovering it. So it was long. It involved a lot of travels around archives like uh, in a region or in, for example, Poznań, where is a uh, archive of SSX and Sondra Commando, which plays an uh, important role in the time of uh, Nazi era in, Czechoslova in, in uh, previous Czechoslovakia. And I also was in Leipzig because of study, to, because of study the secondary literature, which, was, which is only in uh, German language and not in Czech uh, country. So it involved a lot of things, but because I did it or I was really about the topic and I like it very much, so it was more fun than, than the war. Mm -hmm. Olga Tokarczuk insists that a writer performs the duty of a bell that rings to call attention to our too hasty, habit-bound acceptance of reality. She believes that there is no literature that can remain non-political mm -hmm. in the broad sense of the mm -hmm. word. 
the goddesses are also an attestation of the abuse of psychiatric care between 1950s and 1980s in Czechoslovakia, mm. aren't they? Mm. Yeah. Uh, usually I had no... Um, I didn't want to write books which would be political, but it, it, it happened that all of my books are. Even I was concentrated on females' uh, destiny or, or female fates uh, on the context of 20th century and pri primarily on, uh, on private lives, but it wasn't possible to be focused only on that because if uh, these female fates happen in the second half of the 20th century, it wasn't able to avoid the political issues and the conflict between personal lives and the big history just happened. It was necessary unable to avoid it. So finally, all of my books uh, uh, involve some political issues, like is uh, expulsion of uh, Czechoslovakian Germans after the liberation of Czechoslovakia, or here uh, the conflict uh, between the just uh, village woman who helps people and there's conflict with all uh, systems uh, which they met in their history and systems I mean uh, church, Nazi, uh, Nazi system or uh, communist uh, regime so uh, it was impossible to write it unpolitically even it is focused on private lives. Mm. How significant were the strong women in your life for your intimate and creative evolution? Well, I'm from the family where uh, we are four sisters, so uh, females all my life um, were around me and uh, our mother wasn't strong as, as uh, I write about women who suffered a lot but are strong to survive situations which destroys their life. So my mother wasn't because my mother was a victim of uh, domestic violence which uh, me and my sister we were present and this one very influenced my I think my attitude and point of view that uh, that's why I'm writing about uh, or I'm interested in uh, female faiths who are able to cross and to survive some situation. Mm -hmm. So yeah, important topic for me. By all means. Mm. Since we don't have that much time and there are several people who came to listen to you, to perhaps exchange thoughts or even ask a question, I'm wondering whether there is someone who wishes to ask a question now at this point. Katežiny Tučkovi sa stavi ti uprašanje, izmenjava tu in zdaj to absolutno omogoče. Prosím, svobodno, drzno. Mene zanima, če nisem razumela dobro, te boginje, ki se pojavljajo v obeh knjigah, sorry, for the godnesses, like, how it's, če se bo razumela, ste povezali to z neko skulturo tudi njihova, mislim, zakaj te boginje tako uspredi, mogoče, če bi samo pojasnila malo. Yes, would you perhaps elucidate or say something more about the goddesses. Why do you call them and people okay. call them goddesses? Mm -hmm. yes. She calls. yes, yes. It's very unclear, that's true. So they call, people call them goddesses because uh, they had an ability to ask God for help for their client. But it's uh, very strange because uh, the rituals which they uh, they made and uh, with which they help they heal and cure people where comes from pagan times uh, they were let's say a uh, slavonic women priests and there's uh, knowledge knowledge and all abilities comes from the sixth century and were passed from mother to daughter only in female lines and um, this knowledge were based on herbal treatment so very um, very good psychology because they were very good reader of people of behaving and and uh, na na naturality character of people and uh, they were also um, uh, believed that they could read pre pre um, read the future or say the future to people they were also able to influence weather there were uh, or there are ethnologists wrote about their uh, 
possibility to to say very old rituals in old Slavonic language and the storm which was coming uh, to towards the village and turn out and then out. So they had such a special abilities, let's say. And uh, people visited there from a really large circle. Uh, they say that uh, there's uh, there's uh, influence went from Krakow to Vienna and Budapest to Prague. From the circle, people visited them. And um, uh, when I uh, did the research, I found out the first written notes about goddesses in. Uh, in a black book of town Bojkovice, where was uh, the trials with witches, two of them in the beginning of 17th century were beheaded uh, because they were accused they were witches. So it's the first notes, uh, written notes, and uh, a lot of uh, other notes during 18th and 19th century comes from the Catholic uh, church circles because regional priests usually hated them because they were a lot a big competitors of them because they were able to seek God's help for their clients and still to mix it with pagan rituals. So of course, uh, Catholic priests uh, hated them and tried to to stop their um, activity. And then it, there is a more uh, notes about them uh, from ethnologists and cultural anthropologists from the beginning of the 20th century. Then some notes uh, which were uh, did, which were uh, written by the SS Hexenson the commando. And finally, the uh, secret service agent followed them, and uh, we have some um, um, documents about uh, them, how they was watched uh, during the night when they pick up uh, the herbs or did something necessary for their activities. So uh, it's interesting what uh, goddesses survived uh, through ages, and what was most interesting for me was the first thing which I heard about them, and it was the the sh very short story which told me my friend, who is cultural anthropologist, and he told me that in seventies there was uh, uh, one of goddesses, one of goddesses, and uh, she was sent. Uh, put into the psychiatric clinic and there she, there she was um, cured uh, until she died and uh, it was because she was uh, dangerous for the local secret service uh, agents because she earned money by the healing and curing people which was forbidden in Czechoslovakia during uh, last regime and uh, also she was dangerous because she had a large net of loyal clients who could uh, could um, change the information in her home so that's why she was dangerous and it was the first impression which I heard from my colleague and from this point I started to do the research which finished not in a non-fiction book but in a fiction book but still there is a lot of uh, things which uh, happened which I've heard from personal witnesses and so Thank you. Thank you. I just Would you be so kind and uh, explain or say something about the origin of the name Zhitkovska? the historical mm -hmm. background mm -hmm. and the meaning of the word perhaps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in the border of Czech and Slovak there is a border mountains called White Carpathians and in this border is a small region which is uh, composed of only five villages. One of the village is Zhitkova. This is the name which uh, means nothing. Just, just the name Zhitkova, but it's uh, very interesting because this village and the other four, it's not uh, the village like uh, you can see that it, there is a small uh, center of the village with church and, and uh, houses around. This is a village which is separated in 
very alone uh, homes in the very wide uh, landscape and people live there for example one house uh, is in the, in in the middle of the field and next house is five or ten kilometer uh, far away so it's really large land, uh, large large um, district where the village is uh, into which village is separated so and uh, in this village in particular village called Jitkova come up the phenomenon of goddesses and uh, ethnologists say that it that, that that's why that uh, in the very hard uh, under the hard condition of mountains mountains life and mountains weather and in the in the alone remote remote alone places could come up phenomenon like uh, goddesses because people was uh, they're alone only with the nature so this close connection to nature uh, influenced the abilities and knowledge of the goddess but the name itself Žitkova doesn't mean anything special it's just name thank you Myslím, ten je popotřebný. I have a question about archives. Uh, as I have read that uh, most of these documents were later fictionalized. Mm -hmm. But still, uh, how, uh, how is in Czech Republic? How can you get uh, archive documents, but you are not a historian? Mm -hmm. is it yes, it's possible, and it's a uh, um, it's thing which we discuss uh, really often with my fellow <laughs> colleagues, writers from other countries, post totalitarian countries. Mm -hmm. That uh, in Czech Republic we are very uh, we are very lucky because uh, Secret Service uh, archives was open in early 90s after the breaking of of totalitarian system to democracy, and uh, at first first six years it wasn't. Uh, approachable by uh, anyone just for members of family members of person who was followed uh, like uh, you, for example if you were son of the followed uh, followed father you could ask uh, give your ID that you are who you, who you claim and you would be then uh, involved to go and search things which are in archives but un until 1996 it's open for any anybody you can go there uh, uh, ask for illustration. I don't know if this is the, the translation for the illustration of the name. You have uh, you have only know the date of birth to identify the person, the name of the person, of uh, with the person you really want to check in, and then you are you you can get everything what is inside archive. And my own experience, even if I was unknown uh, scrutinizer of archive. The office, the historians who works in archives are very helpful. And if you are interested and insist on that you would know everything, they will help you to find it. So, so I met really good uh, um, attitudes of of people who are in office of archives. So, yeah, we are lucky. <laughs> But uh, your question was also about Rebritten, so uh, my, uh, I just wanted to know um, some case. I knew that there were some cases of abusing of psychiatric care, for example, mm -hmm. my starting point. And then I went to archive and asked for the documents uh, of... Uh, uh, I knew that one of them was political opponents, another was uh, the witness of Jehovah, other was Catholic uh, dissident, and I wanted to uh, seek and to get these folders. Then I read everything what was relating for uh, relating to uh, abusing of psychiatric care during the communist regime, and uh, afterwards I write the new folder, which is Surmena folder, which is here. So. Uh, the things which are here doesn't mean that I just rewrite the folder mm. of Surmena. Katarzyna, would you say that you somehow reinvent, rediscover language each and every time you um, take on a new book as an author? Agent's language, yeah? 
agent's language you mean? How it is uh, mm. written the documents? Or No, no, I was wondering about your very own language. Oh. Being an author, do you believe that it is uh, to some extent about rediscovering language each and every time when you as Deus Ex Machina, the writer, mm. uh, commence start with writing a new book? I think about my own language that it's a quite civil one that it's not uh, very poetic uh, I, I I I'm not uh, the person who can decide it but by myself I think that I have a very civil civil language but uh, probably I can feel different uh, kinds of language and keep them get them together for uh, into the wider story so what I think it's interesting or for me what interesting how different people dealt with their own language for example the secret uh, service agents how they were able to write about the fates of people who they followed mm -hmm. in a absolute cold and quite a dumb way so that's why for me it was most interesting to try to write uh, Surmena's fates from the point of view secret service agent and the rest I think it depends on critics to, to say how it is written and so so this was what was most interesting for me yes well mm. so how how do you comment about this mentioning secret service agents and so on and we know that today, in so-called democracy, people who has revealed horrible stories about abuse of uh, justice uh, from the side of governments, like um, I don't know Julian Assange, Chelsea Manning, or Edward Snowden, so that actually secret service agents is for each phone of each of us of one. Mm -hmm. So we know publicly that we've been controlled and um, uh, what's the word surveilled followed or yeah uh, so yeah. how do you see this relation and from the time of said totalitarian regime communist regime in Czechoslovakia and what's happening in Western democracy today mm -hmm. well yeah I think that yeah it didn't finish but for me has a most attraction or to me attracted most when it is uh, connected with uh, with the uh, history totalitarian system changing taboo things which are were tabooed and female female fate so current situation i think that didn't it, it didn't change everything so i think that yeah, it's possible we are followed as well. Current situation could be the same, but for me it's not so much interesting. This uh, this uh, stories like uh, the stories which I can found by myself and are connected with some fa uh, female fates. So. <laughs> Thank you. Because of the pre previously mentioned density of the schedule. I think we can, as they say, wrap it up. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for the brilliant book and... Um, well, thank you for everything, indeed. I Katarina thank you very Chukla. much for publishing it, for a lovely design. It's very, very nice. I like the book very much. Thank you for everything and thank you for your time as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.